floor is yours. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you well, yes. Okay, good. Uh, it's an honor to be here to, uh, with you today, and uh, particularly since uh, my father, Dr. Phil Amro, started working in Thailand in the 1950s and continued working through there uh, on up to the present and, and as far as uh, uh, through our company, P.E. Lamro & Associates, which uh, this year is celebrating its 60th anniversary. And I know he would be very pleased the fact that I'm participating uh, in this uh, conference and uh, I am as well. Today, I'm gonna talk with you about groundwater science issues and research trends as they relate to the sustainable water and climate change management after COVID-19. Uh, and I know it says after, but let's say when and if, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully the virus will uh, soon leave us. So uh, uh, to that extent, uh, hydrogeology plays a major role in all aspects of environmental planning, execution and implementation as Professor Makuto has uh, explained to us, and without a safe, sustainable water supply, life cannot exist and hopes for prosperity are limited. And much of future world demands will be made up of the groundwater component. In fact, the United Nations has uh, identified water resources as a top priority, and attention is particularly drawn to freshwater stress, which relates water withdrawal to to the percentage of water available. And based on the current rate of usage, the United Nations is not optimistic about the global water outlook. In fact, in this uh, graphic, we see that the groundwater stress from 1995 and what it's projected to be in 2025, and it's, uh, it's very uh, distressing. <laughs> and uh, to address the issue, mankind needs to embrace sustainable water development which is the development of water in a manner in which an adequate supply of good quality water is sustained and the watercourse ecosystem is maintained for the uses of future generations. Water quantity and water quality are inextricably linked as we well know, and therefore there needs to be rapid movements towards sustainable water development in developed and developing countries. To move towards a sustainable water development, freshwater should be managed in a holistic manner, or in other words, an ecosystem approach. Management of water resources is holistic when it is done on a catch, catchment or drainage basin basis. This includes both land and water resources since land use can have significant impacts on freshwater and related ecosystems. Thus, water legislation should provide for a holistic ecosystem approach to the management of water. And to that extent, uh, the United Nations has addressed this as far as its sus sustainable development goal number six, which is access to water and sanitation. And clean, accessible water for all is an essential need of the world. There's sufficient fresh water on earth to achieve this and due to bad economics or poor infrastructure, which we see not only in the United States, but many countries around the world, many millions of people, most of them children, die from diseases associated with inadequate water supply, sanitation, and hygiene. Water scarcity, poor water quality, and inadequate sanitation negatively impact food security, livelihood choices, and educational opportunities for poor families. Drought affects some of the world's poorest countries, worsening hunger and malnutrition. And by 2050, one in four people is likely to live in a country affected by chronic or recurring shortages of fresh water. <coughs> some of the Research that's ongoing to address these problems is highlighted in selected uh, prominent journals, uh, several of which I'm editor of, of which, 
and they're published by uh, Springer. Yeah. Excuse me, excuse me, Dr. James. Uh, yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but we cannot see your screen. Have you shared your screen yet? Yes, I'm. I. You haven't seen anything that I've. No, we we cannot see your uh, screen. I mean your slides at all. So if you could, could you please or uh, maybe send your slide through the chat box so that we can share from outside. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. <laughs> okay um let's see um okay maybe um okay so you see the chat box um at the bottom it said chat so just click there yes I'm so sorry for um, the uh, intervention. No, that's okay. But, um, that's, okay. <laughs> I want you to see them, so uh, <laughs> certainly. Yes, um, please. Okay, if you see the chat box, and you can type the message there, and you can send the file as well. So you just kind of, um, you know, drag the file into that chat box. So it's going to be sent. No. Oh, okay. So it seems like we have your file. So if it's possible for us to share the screen from our side, I'm asking the admin right now. I uh, I sent the uh, presentation to you. Okay. So so um uh, admin. So may I ask you to share the screen, the presentation slides of Dr. Lamaro, so that we all can see his presentation. Okay, so now, okay, now you, oh, we see your screen. Okay, Dr. Lamaro, so um, maybe uh, would you like to start um, at the beginning or maybe you can start um, at any slide that you want so that we can click um, to the slide that you like us to, um, to share on the screen right now? Okay, yeah, I can't, I'm having trouble getting back into the uh, Zoom now. Okay. All right. So now we can see your slides. And so oh, if okay. you please go ahead with your presentation. Okay. Um, maybe briefly from the beginning. Okay, you see the live uh, screen? There, there we go, yes, okay. Yes, yes, please go ahead. So I'm going to um, keep quiet now. Thank you, problem solved. Thank you so much. Uh, can you take me back to where I was? Uh, admin, please go to maybe slide three. Hmm. Slide number three. Present, okay, uh, maybe next two slides, please. Okay, can you see the screen, Dr. Jim? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, now you see that uh, it's the slide number five. So if you like to, um, you know, maybe repeat this slide and then move on to okay. the next one. Okay. Yeah, if you go to the uh, Sustainable Water Resources Management, the cover of the journal, and next is the aims and scope. Can you see that? Hello? Yes, we are moving on. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Right, the aims and scope. So we're aims looking at the, uh, uh, it addresses a broad range of topics in water resources management and covers mm -hmm. geopolitical and socioeconomic effects and constraints. And it's uh, unique in that regard and that most uh, journals cover the technical aspect. And so, this covers both the, the uh, geopolitical and socioeconomic in addition to technical and includes mm -hmm. such topics as those uh, noted there and uh, addresses water Next resources. Yep. Addresses okay. water resources management, mm -hmm. sustainability of water resources, ground and surface water quality and quantity, water 
use and reuse, surface and groundwater interaction, act for storage, recharge, and more. So uh, if you could go on then to uh, the next, uh, down to environmental earth sciences, the cover. You see that? And the aims and scope of, of uh, environmental earth sciences are uh, concerned with interaction between humans, natural resources, ecosystems, special climates, or unique Slide 18, geographical. Please. Slide oh, 19, please. Yes. All right. 19. And the major disciplines include hydrogeology, hydrochemistry, geochemistry, geophysics, engineering, geology, remediation science, natural resources management, environmental mm -hmm. climatology, and biota environmental geography, soil science, and microbiology. And I go through these to give you an idea of the topics that, that uh, are currently being studied. Here's uh, uh, the, if you go to the slide, it says 100 most cited papers from all years since 2009. And it, it shows uh, some of the different topics that have been studied. Uh, they include, uh, carbon sequestration, landslides, susceptibility, uh, GIS, and particularly groundwater. And I've sent all these slides to you so that uh, if, if the participants want to look at them in more detail, they can. Uh, if you'll go to the next uh, sl slide down that relates to Discover Water, it's the cover of the journal Discover Water. And then after that is the aims and scope of it. And it's a, a broad open access journal publishing research from across all fields relevant to the science and technology of water research and management. And to that extent, it represents a change in publishing as well in the scientific community because there's more open access, which provides rapid uh, information uh, so that uh, some of these critical areas can be addressed uh, quickly and, uh, and actions taken. And it discovered, it covers not only research on water as a resource, for example, for drinking, agriculture and sanitation, but also the impact of society on water, such as the effect of human activities on water availability and pollution. And as such, it looks at the overall role of water at a global level, including physical, chemical, biological, ecological processes, and social policy and public health implications. And particularly it's included in articles that um, may help to support and accelerate the Sustainable Gal Development Goal 6, which we're uh, concentrating on. Not only do we look at uh, international journals that are, uh, and what the uh, trends are as far as the research, but we also look at uh, professional international associations that address these trends. And uh, the International Association of Hydrogeologists is, is one of the key ones in this regard. And many of you uh, participating in the conference are probably members of it, but it includes scientists, engineers, water managers, and other professionals, groundwater research management and protection, has 4,000 members worldwide in 40 countries, provides worldwide networking and eight specialized research commissions. And for those of the younger people in the audience, I do like to emphasize the fact, the fact of the help that it gives as far as networking and meet, meeting people around the world and finding out what they're working on and, and uh, what's at the forefront of, of uh, research. Uh, to give you an idea of that, here are some of the commissions that uh, the IH uh, has. There's uh, groundwater and climate change, groundwater and energy, groundwater research, karst hydrogeology, managing act for recharge, mineral and thermal waters, regional groundwater flow, and transboundary aquifers. And I know some of those of y'all uh, listening in are uh, members of some of these commissions. And next, let's look at the UN Water Partners, or uh, the International Association of Hydrogeologists as partners along with IGRAC and so forth. 
uh, and their groundwater resources are under increasing pressure due to human activities and climate change. And uh, so uh, UNESCO and IGRAC have put out a groundwater overview publication that showcases the essential issues of groundwater, informs about groundwater related activities, enhances knowledge, exchange and collaboration, and raises awareness about our most important hidden resource. And to that, to that extent, the year 2022 has been named the year of groundwater by the United Nations. And it, uh, its theme is uh, the invisible, uh, to, to make the invisible visible by making people more aware of groundwater. Here's the publication itself. Uh, it's the, uh, well, you can probably, it's the groundwater overview slide. That's the cover of it. And then in it, it uh, covers several uh, important areas. And uh, one of those, of course, is climate variability. And it's the world's largest distributed store of freshwater. <coughs> Pardon me. Groundwater plays a central part in sustaining ecosystems and enabling human adaptation to climate variability and change. Aquifers have a buffering capacity and they're naturally more resistant to external impact than surface waters. Since variability of surface water availability is increasing due to climate change, the strategic importance of aquifers for water and food security is clearly growing. In regards to uh, trap governance law and trans boundary issues, uh, groundwater is a common pool resource and is often utilized in an individual level, regardless of overall impact on the aquifer, because neither use nor impact are necessarily immediately visible. This becomes even more complex when aquifers cross state or national boundaries and they need to be governed through a process of shared responsibility and participation, information availability and transparency and rule of law. Our company, PILA, worked on the third largest spring in the world in Damascus, Syria. And part of the problem was the uh, uh, low flow in the summertime. And so uh, to address the issue, we had to go into Lebanon to map the recharge area. So it just shows it's an example of uh, you can't depend on country boundaries or state boundaries, and you have to look at the, uh, the geology and the hydrogeology. There's, well, another aspect is to look at uh, groundwater and the environment, the very various kinds of ecosystems that depend on groundwater. There's aquatic, terrestrial, subterranean, and Accordingly, groundwater is an essential part of any ecosystem-based adaptation measure, green infrastructure, or a nature-based solution. Groundwater and settlements. It's the main source of water supply in many cities around the world and increasingly under pressure due to continuous urbanization, climate change, and inadequate water management. Groundwater depletion and land subsidence are serious problems, and particularly in, in uh, Bangkok right now and other similar large cities around the world. In fact, in uh, environmental or sciences, we've just now published a special issue on that if you're interested in, in uh, that uh, problem. And the pumping rates in the megacities may be reduced and compensated by urban rainwater harvesting rural urban water transfers, act for recharge with wastewater and similar measures. Sanitation, health and pollution is another aspect to be considered and that includes the fact that water related disease remains one of the major health concerns in the world and the improvement of groundwater quality control in conjunction with improvement in sanitation and personal hygiene is the main strategy to reduce water related disease. Groundwater can be polluted from agriculture, sanitation, industry and mining, landfills and waste disposal, traffic and transport, and also from chemical processes within geological environments. So regular groundwater monitoring 
vulnerability assessment, protection from point source and diffuse pollution and pollutant removal are some of the necessary actions to preserve and improve groundwater quality and health. And as Dr. Makuto was telling us, in regards to food and energy, about two thirds of all abstracted groundwater is used in agriculture. Global food production increasingly relies on groundwater over abstraction and groundwater depletion eventually leads to decline of food production. About one fourth of the energy used globally is spent on food production and supply, including groundwater pumping. Deep aquifers as a potential source and a sink for heat can play a much more prominent role in the provision of renewable uh, energy, sorry, renewable geothermal energy. Just to, finally in regards to economics, groundwater resources are extensively used in production processes by large international companies all over the world. Accordingly, international investors are being encouraged to share broader societal and environmental costs of groundwater and understanding the value of groundwater being additional incentive for investors and asset managers to participate, leading eventually to investment risk reduction. Finally, as a summary, uh, there are a number of, of research trends, uh, some of which we've touched on, but uh, some of the more important ones include Remote sensing increasingly used for aquifer management, satellite data interpretation for drought and long-term weather forecasting, bringing more real-time reporting data online via the web, cross-disciplinary training, regional, national, and international emphasis on improving water use agreements and best practices, and more collaborative studies among consortium universities or corporations and water is an economic commodity or as a natural right. And in regards to training, uh, many of the people from Thailand have come to uh, Alabama to train with our company and or with the, at the University of Alabama. And we hope that that can be a continuing thing in the, in the future. So, but thank you very much. And I'll look forward to discussion later on. Thank you very much, Dr. James.